Luke chapter 1, verse 14. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. How about that? Isn't that awesome? Wow. Thank you, God. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. I want to minister today from the sermon topic, you know, during this Christmas season, 2019, this pre-Christmas message, the sermon title is, The Reason We Need Jesus. So this past week, I've spent some time in New York. Lots and lots of people. Perhaps the crowds may have been compared to the time of the census when Jesus Christ was born. It seemed as if the whole world was in New York. <laughs> as I walked amongst the crowd and walked from one place to another, I could not help but think about how many of the people were in relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, they were shopping for Christmas, but how many had already received the Christ of Christmas in their hearts? Yes, they were decked out in red and green clothing, but how many knew about the blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary or knew of the fact that Jesus is of the tree, which is of the root of Jesse and King David, which yielded everlasting life? Christmas packages were wrapped in beautiful paper. Yet how many had received the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger? We went into Macy's. And the children were going into Santa's wonderland. Yet, how many knew of the son that Jesus sent as the wonder to this land called earth to win lost souls to him? Church, I do believe that the people of today are not that different than the people back in the day when Jesus was made manifest, his initial advent to the earth. Old Testament Isaiah 9 and 2, it says this, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Then in the New Testament, it's echoed in Matthew 4 and 16, the people which sat, my Lord, I just got something right there. It says that they sat in darkness. That means, I think somebody's got it already. It means that they were comfortable. That's right. That's right. They, they, they were sitting there in darkness. There is a comfort, apparently, in darkness where people will sit there. And not everybody will recognize you, you shouldn't be sitting in darkness. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, my Lord, light is sprung up. Isn't that a hope? Huh? Somebody's in darkness, somebody's in death, the shadow of death. In spite of that, there is a hope. They needed Jesus in the days of King Herod. We need Jesus today in the days of kings, presidents, premiers, and Hopes. Let's travel with Luke and appreciate again that God sent his son so that we will be one back to him as we look at the following three points. Point number one, the political crisis. <laughs> A political crisis. Mm -hmm. Point number two, the proper couple. The proper couple. And then point number three, the prophetic call. <laughs> the prophetic call. Let's deal with it. Point number one, the political crisis. Whether it is locally, the PLP versus the OBA, or internationally, the Democrats versus the Republicans, many are of the belief that it is a time of political crisis. Come on up in here. I'm on Facebook, even from New York, I'm reading what's going on between the two parties. I'm actually in America looking at you know, CNN or MSN, BC, wherever, and, and you see what's going on in, in America, huh? There is no process 
or institution more unstable than the political institution. Every four years, a nation, a country, or an island stands on pins and needles to see which way the political winds are blowing. Indeed, the people, no matter who they stand for, believe that their future is at stake and that the path of their future will unfold wonderfully or woefully, depending on who the next leader is. And isn't it something that you can have one leader and they say, oh, woe is me, and that same leader, there's another group of people saying, oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, church, as I looked at this text, I found it interesting that when looking at the time in which Jesus would be born, they were also experiencing challenging times as it pertains to the leaders of that day. When they look to the, pay attention to this, people, this is going to be sweet. When they look to the crown or the court system, there was, well, let's see what was going on. Verse 3. It seemed good to me, this is Luke, seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all the times from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. Theophilus is a person who is thought to be a magistrate in the court system. Okay. In other words, he represents the legal system. Then in verse 5, we read that King Herod is the reigning monarch the royal family. So in the times when Jesus needed to be born, in the times when we needed Jesus to show up, there were in charge the lawyers and the royal family. Right. Help somebody out of me. <laughs> you would think that with lawyers and the first family of that time, everything would be okay. I mean, hasn't that been the script from then until now? You get the right court system. You get the right magistrates in, in charge. You get the right Supreme Court judges in place. You got them, and then you get the right people in the White House or the right people at government house. You get the right people. So you get the court system, and you get the royal family together. Everything's going to be all right. Ain't never everything been all right yet. trying to tell you that the same way it was then, it's the same way it is right now. Yet the truth is that when politics determines the quality of living, you are going to find a crisis. You know, let's just do an example, the latest, the latest crisis, the latest answer. The new health system, health care. Some people are hip hip hooray. And so the other people are wash it away. It's always a, it's always a crisis. Okay, I wanna, I wanna, like, interrupt myself and say this. It's always a crisis when Jesus Christ shows up. You know, you got people. Hear me, so hold up. You got people that say, "Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till I get my life together. I'm gonna wait till everything is fine. I'm gonna wait till you know things are in order. Then I'm gonna come to Jesus Christ. You ain't coming because that's gonna prove that you could get it in order. I found out that Jesus shows up." when it's proven that you can't get it together on your own. You can't make it by yourself. You ain't Jesus and you ain't Christ and you ain't Jesus Christ. You ain't Emmanuel. Hmm. Come on now. He's the Christ of every crisis. He's the Christ of every crisis. That made me, what? That's the old school song right there. You'll solve your every problem. Listen, let me move on. I'm trying to get you out of here before midnight. <laughs> Bianca's laughing at me. <laughs> so listen, listen. There will always be those who fall outside of political favor. Okay? Okay? There will always be those who struggle no matter who is in charge of things. It's a crisis. Crisis right now, the ambulance going on. It's a crisis. You know, do, does the ambulance stop because PLP is in charge? No. It's a crisis. 
If UBA, uh, OBA, <laughs> OBA ever gets back in, you think the ambulance is not going to go anymore? No, it's still going to be crisis. Okay, you're getting the picture. The truth is that if you depend on a human royal family, you will see a royal mess and a regal message that does not necessarily line up with the heart of God. They may be the first family, but are they a faith family? They may be our first family, but are they sanctified? Right. So anyway, you guys, listen. Let me show you something else. Because <laughs> now you see we've got the courts have been happening. You've got this royal family, right? And things are not going right, right? Okay. Let's take a look at verse 5. <laughs> it reads, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, mm -hmm, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Hold on. Church, understand <laughs> that during the days of Theophilus, the magistrates, the court, during the days of Theophilus and Herod, that the system of religion was well in place also. Religion was well established. Religion was carrying on in all that it did. Its rites and its rituals were in full swing. So let's, let's understand this. So at one time, this is what's going on. The courts are happening. The royal family, the first family, and the church all these systems are happening and are still sitting in darkness. Oh, I'm going to go somewhere with that. All of this is happening. Court system, royal family, church hierarchy. Well, why Jesus need to come if the church has got it together? Are you following me? <laughs> People like that girl's radical. I'm just Bible. It's Bible, 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 Bible. All of this order, and yet things were out of order. The legal system, the monarchical system, or the royal system, and the religious system were all in operation, yet there was still a need for Jesus to come. Come on. That's what I'm saying. That, that you're looking at the courts. Please, Jesus, come. You're looking at the first family? Jesus, please come. You're looking at the church? Jesus, come. See, and if we don't preach, if we don't study the word of God, if we don't study the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to give us insight, then we miss the sight of God. Because again, you got a question. If everything was all right with this priesthood, if everything was all right, with Zacharias and what he stood for, why would Jesus have to come? Uh, yeah. To let that sink in. Let it sink in. You got and I, was, I was at the airport coming in last night, and this thing was sweet to me. If they saw me, they would have seen me just walking up and down. I was walking up and down. I was going, what? I was going, what? The court system. The royal family. And the church, religion. <laughs> they got the courts. <laughs> you got the first family. <laughs> and then you got the church. Everybody, everybody's always trying to control things. Everybody. But you, you know if you're paying attention to any of these systems, Courts will legalize things God said don't legalize. The first family, well, they change and switch up. So depending on who is first in the next four years, you're going to have a different mindset and belief. Listen, some days I forget who the first lady of America is, you know, see? But nevertheless, let me, let me stay here. The church, well, depending on what you go, so the church says, well, what the court thinks about it? Well, who is in charge? Who is the leader? And so all of this going on, an indicator, it is not meeting the needs of mankind. It is not 
speaking forth the heart of God. It is not the remedy that God would have. This world is the si sitting in church in darkness. So come on up out of here. Huh? Sitting in the courtroom, sitting in the first room, and in darkness. If, if God from his, his lofty throne had looked down and seen a reflection of who he was, he wouldn't have had to come to erase all of that. And that's what we've got to understand. Thank you, Deacon. You know, so don't be afraid. I'm not talking about your particular church. Well, actually, your particular church is this particular church, but I'm talking about who I'm talking about. None of these systems and not one of these systems, even the systems together, was able. You hear me? Did you just hear me? You know, maybe to, even together, individually, or working together, none of them were able to meet the needs of the people. That's why Christians, that's why, and I remember hearing it growing up. I went like 100% for it. But you heard, you shouldn't take your brother's system to court. I grew up in Old Pentecost. How many of you heard that in Old Pentecost? Don't take them to court. You know, me, I'm like, they owe me something. They don't want to hear God, they're going to hurt the magistrate. But anyway, holy people like, don't, don't take them to court. Why? Because the court system is a poor reflection of God's holy word. So let me say here that as it was in this day, right here, so it is today. Time has not changed and cannot change the fact that society, humanity, will never experience the fullness of life in systems which are man-made, Men defined and men controlled. Hmm? All their system, every one of them, think they can tell God what to do. Come on, what, what, what? my Bible. Read my Bible. Bible, 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 Bible. No, a real Bible. Real. Every one of these systems, every one of these systems, courts think they can change this. Hmm? Royal families, because of the way they live or whatever, wherever around the world, think they can change this. The church. How you got, help me out here right now. How you got one Bible and churches believe a whole pile of different things? Hmm? It's true. That's, that's why even these systems together could not save humanity. Lord Jesus. And we've got to understand the church that if we look to an institution that's framed by humanity, I said that's framed by humanity. We can miss the heart of God. Hence, God must now step in. God, God, God will step in to remedy the current mess. The current crisis brings us to point number two, the proper couple. The proper couple. God, I love God. God always picks up the baton where mankind have dropped it. Hear me, hear me, hear me. He always picks it up. And the last thing that God mentioned in this list was the church. He, help me, God, right here. God is not, I'm good right here. Yeah, yeah. God is not going to bring salvation by introducing a new ministry. Huh? <laughs> God it's not going to bring about his divine will by switching up who the first family is. God left it off where he said, Zach, in, in the time of Theophilus, Lord have mercy, in the time of Herod, there was Zach. Now see, you see, you've got to hope that in a time of confusion, in a time where so many are coming against God, there is Kenneth. You, you, you've got to hope that in a time when humanity is doing what they want through the courts, through those who seem to be the stars of the day, the glamour couples, you better hope there is Kayla. Okay, follow it, follow it. Because what it says, Sister Kayla, is though, like Maria, Though you're not perfect, you're a perfect place to pick up. Because you at least are of the right mindset 
where I can take you from where you are and take you to where you need to be. That's why, that's why God dealt with Zacharias. At least he's a, he's a part of this proper couple. Come on. Come on, I say. Okay, I think you got it. All right. Hence, we begin with the inability of the religious system to provide all of what the people need. That's why I don't believe in a religious system. I've seen it fail people all my life. I believe in relationship. I believe in the body of Christ. You know, we've got Christmas coming up. I just use my family as an example. Because I'm sure your family is pretty similar. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, most of them. All right. What you do is you have people coming from different parishes, but they're all a part of the same family. You know? Maria, do your beats. Of course, I'm a professional, of course. Maria, do the rice. Which rice? Oh, you know which rice. I just asked to ask. I thought they might want to switch up this year. But apparently, I do professional peas and rice flavored with the coconut. Amen. You got a portion because you said amen first. See that? No, no. The other thing she said to me was, bring... Get no, she said, get the turkey. Now, uh, now, see, see, you gotta understand something. She didn't say, ah! yeah. Because I wrote in the chat, you know, I, that ain't my. Um, I'm not a professional at that. You know, I know my limits. She said, no, no, you just get it. Bring it to me. Hey, hey, hey! I had no problem with that. Because what you have is different people that bring different things to the table, but it makes for a whole meal. That's relationship. You know, I, don't, I hope it ain't no families like this. Ain't no bring what you feel like it. <laughs> Everybody going out the store buying a piece of cassava pie. What you having? Cassava, 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 cassava. Christmas will be all over. All over right there. Done. The family feud full of knots. Every type of Christmas knot. Just be done. And so understand that, that again, we are talking about not a religious system. See, let me help you out at the end of 2019 so you understand about the pastor. I'm not into religion with you. I'm into relationship. I want to know who you are. I want to know your temperament. I want to try to guide you. I want to try to give good advice. That's at least relationship. However, the danger, thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit says some see you, though, as being religious, which means lack of relationship. Mm -mm. Seeming out for relationship. Because you when you're in relationship, you don't leave. At least me, I'm, I don't leave relationships. I work at relationship. It's a difference. If it's just a religious moment, oh, you can leave and go. But when you're in relationship, you stick to it. You work it out. You say, look, you bring the turkey, I'll cook the turkey. Go ahead, go down, go BAC, go Linda's, go just get the turkey. I'm Tam Ponda, get, that's what she said, Tam Ponda. So the husband, as wonderful as he is, he's already got the 11 and a half Ponda. I like that, you know. He did not know when he said that. I said, see, because that's the way we operate. We give more than required. <laughs> I didn't tell him that, but that's what I was thinking. He said, well, you know, she asked for a tampon. He said, so I went down. There's like an 11 and a half pound. I said, that's how we do it. Uh-huh. There's all, always more. That's right. So, no, whatever, you know, he over there shaking his hand like, I didn't know that girl. That's me. <laughs> right? So, let's, let's get back to the text now. Let's see what's happening. So, there was an inability of the religious system to provide what was needed. If this is just religion to you, if this is just a Sunday to you, if this is, well, I'm just going to be here to you, that's religious system. If this is relationship, I got to be in the house. I, I got my law strength. Something I just got, I cannot miss. I don't want to hear about it. I don't need you to relay it to me. I need to be in the place and a part of it. Pass the, what string beans, please? Pass it. Don't tell me how it tasted. Huh? Don't, 
Who goes to a Christmas dinner and says, so how that taste with an empty plate? No, no. But Christmas. Let me tell you about Christmas. I'm helping you out Christmas. Christmas, you got so much food. It's like usually you can divide your plate into four parts or five. Not Christmas. You got you to gotta have like a, what you call this? Like a skyscraper. It's got to have different, different floors because you got to have different leaves at the bottom. And then you run out of, you run out of room, so now you got to put stuff on. You got to layer it like a layer cake. That's the way it is Christmas because it's so much. And that's the way I like, see, I'm always thinking, you know, that's the way I want Shekinah. I'm going to just boring three things, that, that, that. No, I want to layer it up. Come on, slice it, layer it. That's, that's the way I think. I'm going to get back to this message right now. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, come on now, come on. Uh-huh, here we go. So point to note, you begin, this is what I was saying, Sister Kayla, you begin where you left off. So you don't begin with the law. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> so God said, the law, I didn't want to continue with the law. That's, that's how I mess you up. You don't begin with the politics of the day or the first families. No, no, no. Jesus, I'm excited about this. You begin with the church, or at least the system. Mm. You can at least start here with the right people. So now let me read verse 5 to you once again. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. The right or proper couple. The priest... Zacharias, and you know, I was studying this, and I said, you know what? I'm sure I used this text last year, because I like it. I'm so sure. So God has to show me something different. Stay tuned, all right? All right. So <clears throat> the priest, Zacharias, his name means remembered by Jehovah. Look at him now. Picture him. Remembered by Jehovah. <laughs> Proper guy, doing right, in the right place. Proper guy, married. That's another thing, but I can't get into that today. His wife was Elizabeth. Now her name means oath of God. Oath of God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. There is something about this Elizabeth where God has made a promise to give her something. Your name means an oath. Your name means something is about to happen. Okay, okay, all right, all right. So a righteous couple, a proper couple, yet a barren couple. Beyond this, their names indicate the very opposite of their barren state. God is remembering Zacharias, and God is granting Elizabeth favor. Interesting thing is that at their age, they did not resemble being remembered or favored. Yeah. Well, That's right. You ever, I've done it, you ever go on it to God and say, hello? <laughs> woo, woo. I'm, I'm still here, God. Miss Maria, you know, the little one you saved since seven, right? Once never drinks, nothing. you know, this one. I know about that other Maria, but this one. The one ain't drink, ain't smoke, ain't dance on no club, you know. You remember me? Huh? How could you be living? How could you be living doing right, Zacharias and Elizabeth? What, Zacharias, what, what you talking about? Look, don't even say what your name means. Remember of God. Elizabeth? Don't even tell anybody what your name means. They look more like a couple that have been forgotten. And a couple who had certainly not experienced that certain favor. Hmm? See, and, and you know what? I'm going to keep talking to this scale. You know what? We get stuck when we're not remembered. We get stuck when we have not been favored. And let me, let me tell you what happens, and this, this is what I got to train people. When you feel that you've been forgotten, and when you don't have favor, 
The serious thing is, is that then you can start to live that way. Because you give up on yourself. Because you think God has given up on you. But let me talk about this couple. Watch, watch, watch. Yet, God had his all-seeing eye upon them. For every decade that they served the house of God and were yet barren, God had his eye on them. Come on, come on. Just because you don't have what you stand in need of now, just because you don't have what you've been praying about for three years, for 30 years, that doesn't mean that God doesn't have his eye on you. You've got to know. That's why we got to study the word of God because it's only in the word of God that we are encouraged that when it seems like all is undone, when everything seems like it's dark, when it seems like I've lost my way, when it seems like God has forgotten me, I just need to turn to a book, turn to Luke and begin to read about a couple that over the decades, even though they were not remembered, they were not favored, that God still had his eye. Got his eye on you. Hamanashi, listen, listen. Hmm? Every decade they served the house of God, they were yet barren. God had his eye on them. Favor. <laughs> Favor had not reached them yet. You see, to say yet is that yet. <laughs> Some of you like, God, I'm waiting all year. Yeah. Where we at? How many days we got left? Nine. How many days in this year we got left? Nine? 30 days of September. Maybe. Nine days. We ain't done it yet. Let me tell you something. Let me help you out. He may not do it in 2019. I don't know when he's going to do it, but I'm going to tell you this. Nothing escapes his eye. Whatever you're going through, God's eye is upon you. And God will keep you if you want to be kept. God will keep you with your heart and your mind stayed on him. God will keep you worshiping. What? Worshiping through the turmoil. Worshiping through the pain. Worshiping through the misunderstanding. Just worship God. Because his eye's on you. He's, he's watching to see if you worship him. He's watching to see if you know how to worship him during the sunshine, during the rain, during the storm, during times of peace. God is checking you out. His eye is on you. Hi -yay! His eye's on you. Yeah. They didn't have what they wanted, what they wanted the most. You hear me? And yet they still serve God and worship God. What? That's an in spite of type of worship. A nevertheless type of worship. Come on now. Verse 6. Let's read some more about them. Verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. See that? So you hear me? These religious law keepers, don't miss what I say. They were walking in the commandments. I, I gotta make this plain. When we meet up with Zacharias, he has been walking in the ordinances perfectly, blamelessly, He's been walking according to the law. Because he's getting, some of you are with me already saying, right, Pastor, right. So that means the law wasn't perfect. So Jesus had to show up. I know you know that. I know you know that. I know you know that. <laughs> These law keepers did everything right. Did you hear me? <laughs> we're trying to be law keepers and we're not even doing everything right. I ain't going to get into that today. I ain't going to do that today. These law keepers did everything right, and yet it was, listen, church. Oh, I need to have, this is a principle that's going to help you out in 2020. These law keepers did everything right, and yet it was not enough to release the favor that God had in store for them. Okay, well, let me say it like this now. Let me help you out. You're like, ooh, wait a minute. 
So it's more than doing everything right. It's about being right and having faith. You can do everything right, but not really be in what you're doing. Okay, let's go some more. In all the commandments and ordinances, they were blameless. Understand, not only was he blameless, but she was blameless. God's doing something now. He's bringing the girl on board. He's bringing the woman on board. And since they Eve, <laughs> Eve, since they said that you messed things up, I got to watch this. Elizabeth. Oh, come on now, come on now, come on. Come on, come on. I had a Eve, but now I want a Elizabeth. Oh, well, that's another message. Maybe next year. So you might ask yourself, with this proper and near perfect couple, why had not yet favor been released upon them? Good question. That's why I put it on. That's a good question. Now, here's my response <laughs> They were perfect law keepers, they were perfect religious keepers, yet they were not favored. God was not going to bless the law that way. <laughs> They were, they were perfect in the law. They were blameless in the law. So why didn't God come down and bless the law some more? No, no, no. He wanted to make that law barren. I need Elizabeth and Zacharias be able to say, he did everything perfect, everything Merce said to do. Everything the law and the prophet said to do, we did perfectly, and yet we have no fruit. We have no seed. We have no manifestation. Can I tell you, God knows what he wants to multiply. If God wanted the law to multiply, he would have blessed them. They would have had a male seed. This is what God was speaking to me in that particular place. He speaks to me this morning. He, He was saying, Maria, if I had blessed them, while they were under the law, they would have had a son. They would have named his son Zacharias Jr., and he would have been speaking another language. But I need him to be barren under the law, and I need to bring him forth, bring forth through this era of grace so that the son that they, they now bring forth will speak about what's to come and not what's been. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Huh? That's why I tell you all the time, you can't live in the... New Testament and the Old Testament. You can keep on learning from the Old Testament. It's a wonderful school teacher. It'll train you, but it can't take you to where Jesus can take you. I'm not shaking. All right, all right. What does this tell you and me? It tells us that while God respects you for being a law keeper, he definitely respected this couple, didn't he? Mm-hmm. He respects you for being a law keeper and a person who honors leadership that there is a greater expectation of God concerning you. I mean, if the law did it all, we wouldn't need the New Testament, folks. Hello? Verse 7, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. Now, I mean, think about it for a minute, you know. Think about it. The thinking caps on, that's what teachers would say. She was, let me just talk to myself. She was barren under the law. But of course, because I know the story, so do you. She brought forth under this new dispensation to come, to come. That means she wasn't physically barren. She was div- Say that, overseer, loud. Finally barren. God needed her womb to be shut up. He needed her womb to be shut down. Because it wasn't time yet. And listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you how awesome our God is. Mother Augustus, listen to this. Holy Spirit just tickled me. Catch this, church. Let me tell you how awesome our God is. He could have had him barren for 300 years because his name is God. <laughs> but he was ready to awaken that barren womb. <laughs> All he had to do was speak it. <laughs> All he had to do was send a word. <laughs> so many people looking for a word. <laughs> oh, you got to do is go to the living word. <laughs> send a word <laughs> and hear the word. 
So let me, let me talk on it some more. They had, and they had no child because Elizabeth, that Elizabeth, I like that too, that Elizabeth. I say it different. You know, you could say it because, because that Elizabeth, or you could say because of that Elizabeth. You see, where are you putting the emphasis? Where's your emphasis? Uh huh. You have to be careful. Why aren't you emphasizing you know, when you're talking? But anyway, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both <laughs> were now well stricken. Come on, God. He could have just laughed at that stricken. Why you got to say wow? Because he wants you to know everything dried up, everything dead, nothing ain't moving, all gates shut, everything closed, down. You can play, you can play what's that guy, Barry White all you want, ain't nothing happening. You can do whatever you want. You know, Barry White of Jerusalem, you can play him all you want, ain't nothing happening. Nothing, 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 nothing. Wow stricken. I like wow stricken situations, you know. I like impossible situations huh? because upon reading the word of God, huh, I understand. I know what God can do with wow stricken. God can bring forth a miracle out of wow stricken. God will show up out of wow stricken. God will show who he is through a wow stricken situation. And you've got to understand that when you're going through something and you say, I don't know what's going to happen here. You got to then say on the other side, wow stricken. When you are thinking, well, God, how are you going to work this one? On the other side, you got to hear, wow stricken. Well, God, this is, a, this is a hot mess. I don't know what's going to happen here. On the other side, you got to hear, wow stricken. Even when you get your own self in trouble and don't know what to do. You still have a right as a child of God through intercession to go by the Holy Ghost and say wow stricken. In other words God take this situation and do with this situation only what you can do. God bring me through this situation. God without you there will be no go through. There will be no get through. There will be no overcome. So God get me out of Get me out of this situation. Wow stricken. When you, when you understand the power of wow stricken, that that power has no, no hold on what God will do. That's when you become a bad mama jamma. That's when you become a bad brother because you can stand when others don't stand. You can talk when others are afraid to talk. You can stand for God's word when it seems like so many are falling. Why? Because you understand what well stricken means. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. See that? See that? This is the confidence that the world doesn't want the church to have. Huh? That you can look the devil in his face. That you look, you can look impossibility in its eyes and say, well, stricken. I know another well stricken situation. Mm -hmm. Preach the Bible to those who try to come against you. Hey, Amen. Sit down. I'm getting excited. I'm trying to get out of here. Oh, yeah, the bullshit. So listen. Both wow stricken in years. Now listen how I say this. God had not permitted. See that? See that? Didn't get the permit. You don't get permit, you can't do things. I'm waiting for a permit now. <laughs> Seems like I'm been to the court. Even been to the first family. Had a conversation, premier birth. I'm waiting for it. I did. I had to write a note. I ain't tell the executive yet. Yes, sir. But I'm here to tell you, I ain't got no permit yet. I need Jesus to step in. God, wow, stricken. Yeah. He shot. Huh? Mm hmm, mm hmm. So listen, God had not permitted. Just because it hasn't happened is not because it's not going to happen. It could be, it could be, because I don't know, but we must understand, it could be because it's not God's will. Or it's not God's time yet. Come on now. God had not permitted this couple who were perfect law keepers to reproduce under the law. Why would he want to reproduce failure? Can I sit down on that? Let me, come on, let me, thank you, thank you, Elder. Why would you want to reproduce failure? Yeah, I teach her. Teach math. And when there's a problem, and you have a particular way that you go about solving it, and you share it with your class, yeah. and they get it. You keep that up in it. 
Now, if your class, you, you know, you, you, you come up with another method, and none of the class get it, you're going to keep on. No. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. It's a hoax. It's a lesson. It don't work. It don't work. It don't work. Not at all. That's what the law is. <laughs> it don't work. Why would I want to reproduce something that don't work? Hmm? All right, all right. As far as the world was concerned, and as far as the normal biological processes of the human body were concerned, they now could have no seed. Where nobody, Jesus, help me right here and get on my nerves right here. Where nobody go to the temple and say, you guys still rocking on it? Leah's pregnant yet? Where nobody, where nobody doing that now? Where nobody doing that? How, how, many, how many 90 years you have, oh, you have have the ch children in Bermuda? How many? Uh, zero, z z zero, zero, and, and another zero. It's just zero. <laughs> they had timed out their season. Oh, it had mercy. I just love God. Their season was over. <laughs> they were barren or fruitless. Surely they had spent a good 20 to 30 years trying to reproduce. However, they were divinely barren. Both were now well stricken in years. They were well beyond fertility. No ovulation. Ovulation set by like 20, 30 years ago. By this time, they were both. Now, this is important. This was really important when I got it. Listen to this, Jew. Very important. They were both over it. <laughs> and I am sure that they had both healed emotionally. All right. Verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course. Let's say this. Barren, but still before God. Barren, but still doing what you are called to do. Barren, but still faithful to your calling. Huh? huh? Can you be in a barren situation? And the pastor still find you in church? Can, can, can you be going through something that has you so emotionally distraught, yet I look down and I still see you worshiping? Come on now. It's a lesson right there. The Bible said he executed his office. Executed. Hirateo. Hirateo. Meaning... To be busied in sacred duties. Sometimes the best way to make it through barren situations is to be busy doing the Lord's work. Yeah. See, see. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Because when you are busy doing the Lord's work, God will supernaturally impose certain feelings and emotions that saddle you in spite of having your heart broken. Come on. Come on. I went through a time of barrenness, three to four years, stood for babies, stood, you know, for Shante, for Irshan. Oh, it's doing for them all. And I'm there going, but God, huh? Come on. You know some of the struggles I had trying to conceive the last one. But I still stay busy. <laughs> Come on now, forward in faith, you know, that's when I did it, you know. It. Come on. <laughs> Miscarrying on a Friday, in church on a Sunday. Bleeding in the pulpit on a Saturday. Still at church on a Sunday. See, ah, huh? Because guess what? I'm not going to fail, God. God, if you're going to come through, it's going to be with a miracle. God, if you're going to come through, it's going to be because you saw me being busy. God, I'm not going to give room or excuse that you say, see that? You worship, wanted to have a baby more than me. You see, no, 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 no. I was going to worship and praise God no matter what I was going through. So that no matter what, because no matter what, if he never came through, he's still God. He's still God and still worthy to be praised. So I love this, that even through disappointing, listen to this, decades 
of childlessness, you are still found to be faithful in your doing. When you are faithful in doing for God, God knows that he can trust you. Watch this. To wait. I mean, God, when they were 60, I'm convinced she's, she's barren. When, when they're 70, I'm convinced. You wait until the 90? What, what up with that? <laughs> so let's follow it. Follow this, this story. It's beautiful, you guys. Are you enjoying the Bible today? It's lovely. Zacharias is doing his duty on, his, on this day. His duty. Let's look. I was in the airport doing this. Let's look at his duty. I started it. I started it. Of course, Jana's vegan. So I started the sermon in front of this place called Cinnamon Snail. What a name, Cinnamon Snail. Does that sound delightful? <laughs> it doesn't. I got her to get me some um, gluten-free ice cream. No, no snails. <laughs> so we were sitting down. And a nice atmosphere. Jenna was right. Jenna, Jenna's pretty deep, you know, because she came back from getting from the place, right? And she said, Mama, I like the vibe of this place. I didn't want to be so deep. I didn't want to say nothing because I was like, I know I do. I, I, I did my whole introduction. I just thought that wouldn't have been, you know, she's talking about the vibe of the place. I'm like, yeah, it sure did. I finished my whole introduction. I know what my three points are. I, I didn't, you know, it didn't even take that long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I didn't even know that I'm, why I'm talking about this nail place. We were in this, doing this duty, right? Why did I mention this nail place, Jana? <laughs> Jana, so Jana, yes, that's good. So Jan, Jana comes back excited to me. Duty, that's what we were talking about. And she's like, um, Mama. That guy's cool, because um, the way he greets people. He said, oh, there she says, you look, at, if I did a survey of all these places, here she goes, here she goes, <laughs> vegan queen, you see? If I did a survey of all these places, I'm sure it's the vegan places. Got the, look at the crowd, look at the line. I'm going, I ain't getting nothing from there. You get me some ice cream. Uh, but anyway, she's excited. You don't burst the bubble. She's like, um... And then the guy, his servant is cool, you know. And every, he does like this thing. It might be his signature thing he does. When somebody comes, he goes like that. So she said, Mama, watch, watch. So what does Mama spend the next five minutes doing? <laughs> I'm going to now watch. I'm sitting here. I'm going to turn this way, watching the guy. Now, if somebody crosses the pathway while somebody's going to his store, I'm going to miss him doing this. So then, the moment I turned away, he must have did it. So she's like, Mama, you missed it. You missed it. Now, I really wanted to say, well, I'm convinced that you said it. But no, what does Mama? Mama's have to do this. Watch again. <laughs> I watched, and I was so glad when he did it. I was like, yeah, Jana, that was great. <clears throat> that's, that's great. So that was a part of my day yesterday. And so, point, point being is, because I'll pull it in, he was doing his duty. He had a certain way of doing what, yeah, there she goes, she's doing it again. He had a certain way. Nobody else was doing it. So it was, then it became, because mama, it might be that when he communicates, well, I know, that if somebody needed to know about well, who served him, like, because he does this, they would always know it's him. Some, some type of nonsense she's telling me. I'm like, why are we creating a, 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 a series, a reality show out of this? You know, but that's, that's all in my head, but you never say, oh, oh no. You, if I had said something at that point, Alder James, I just got to go into it. If I had said something, she'd be like, oh, mama, it should matter to you. It matters to me. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I'm just expressing myself, so you gotta enjoy it. So, I don't say half of what I think. Anyway, so now Zacharias, back to Zach, he's on his duty. My Lord, it popping out like that, excuse me. Oh, Lordy, there he goes. 
I can't use that now. That might be germy. You know how I am. Okay. It's on his duty on this day, right? Y'all got to picture the whole thing. Verse 9. <laughs> According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. God's timing. You can't miss it. Hmm? His job was to burn incense. Right? Oh. Right? So, in other words, an incense has a certain... Hmm. Back in the day, they used, some people used to burn this to cover out the stuff that they were smoking. <laughs> I remember. I see you two guys. I'm right in it. <laughs> you know. So his job on that day was to burn incense. So let's just talk about it. You want to burn incense because you want to replace the current smell with a new smell. What we can do, because you be like, well, all the priests did that. Yeah, but not all the priests were this barren couple. God is starting with this barren couple. They're perfect under the law. And like a baton, he's going to move from this perfect couple under the law and bring about a new sin. Okay, let me help you. Let me help you. So, interesting. Listen, let me talk about the job of Zacharias on this day. There were three priests. Their job, oh, Lord, when I read this, did I read this? Oh, and we are sitting at the gate. Their job, three priests, right? You have to picture it. Their job was to go to the altar. <laughs> this is beautiful. Very mind your canyon, too. Go to the altar. Scoop up the old ashes. And get rid of it. That's a word right there. You missed it. Scoop up what you used to use, what is now of no use. <clears throat> Scoop up what can't catch on fire anymore. Come on, huh? <laughs> so their job was to get rid. Priests, your job is to get rid of the old ashes. They then had to get fresh coals, fresh coals of fire. What's going to replace the old covenant? Fire of the Holy Ghost. That's why everything leads up to the day of Pentecost. My God, all right. There was now a new fire, and the chosen priests, would then sprinkle the new incense over the new fire. So God chooses Zacharias to add the new scent to what had been old. Whatever you were used to doing up to this point, we now have a fresh fire and you have a certain scent. Mm -hmm. So in this manner of thinking then, we have to remember then, oh, so I am a part of the kingdom where old can become new. I am a part of the kingdom where things that were wasted and away with God to bring about a new thing. I am a part of the kingdom where things have lost their fragrance, he'll add new fragrance. You see, you see how we do it? Yeah. See, I, that's why I'm like, how come Christians are grumpy? I find so much to be happy about. Huh? There will be a new fragrance on a new fire. Lord have mercy. He, you know, used to be when you were first saved, full of fire. You know, the old timers who got in type, like, she can't keep still. No, don't keep still. No, because when they were young, they couldn't keep still. I'm worried about old people when they say get tired. You sit down. Let me praise them. You, you sit down, be quiet. Let me praise them. What? The church is long now. It weren't long when you used to stay in at midnight, mama. 
I remember church began eight. We began back up Lawyer Hill midnight. I mean, child abuse, get us up for school, seven o'clock. <laughs> I don't know how parents did it. Knocked off from work, went home, caught the bus, most of them, cooked a meal, got us ready for church. Sometimes we went to church, had to come back, and we still got up for school and still were brilliant. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. Hmm. Nevertheless, let's go back to Zach. Incense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember I was 15. I went to a house with a friend. <laughs> I walked in that house. I thought the place was lit up, man. But... No, two times I had that experience. I said, yeah, that's the first and last time I'll be in that house. What? I'll tell you it was afterwards. <laughs> I said, not today. You're nice. You didn't start no trouble because you didn't know what type of people in that house where it's lit up. Okay. That, that was, um, I was 15, 16 years old. Never went to that house again. Anyway, you, it's about making choices. You find yourself in a circumstance that you's not, you know it's not holy, and you know God wouldn't be pleased. And my Lord, if your mom and daddy found out if you was in this house, no, 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 no. Back out. Don't go back in. See, that's a lesson. Anyway, moving on. So, the jaw, incense. Incense represented, ah, oh, this is what, this is what the lesson is. Look at this, look at this. The incense represented intercession. So there's a new type of intercession now. God is saying, away with the old, there's a new type of intercession going on. All right. So, so on this day, there was a fresh fire of intercession. No longer what the old make do. There had to be something new. He did what was expected, but had no idea that this time things would be different. All the priests before him had done the same thing, and yet God would use the fragrance of who he was. Because that's another thing. I told you this last year. The priest basically only got to be the high priest once in the lifetime. So the timing of God for this couple, all right. So they had, all the priests before him had done the same thing, yet God will use this fragrance, the fragrance of who he was and of who he and his wife were to begin something new. 10 and 11. I'll let you know it's about intercession. Watch this. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. They were praying on the outside, hmm. old prayers, but with a new fragrance. Old prayers, but now there's a different type of inter intercession. Hmm. Different intercession. All right. On the inside, a new fragrance ascending into God's presence. The angel of God appears on the right side. Don't miss it. The Bible could have just said the angel of the Lord appeared. So why you got to say the right side? Preachers understand this. This is training. The right side is the side of power. Oh, seamen say that. You think I should say that? It's not in my notes. Yes, I will. So on this day, with Zacharias and Elizabeth and the new fragrance, this this new move is being sanctioned and empowered by a messenger on the right side. Wow. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That means that all the other stuff that came before it was not empowered. Wow. It was more like on the left side. Wow. So the Moses, Law, and the prophets were on the left side. <laughs> but on the right side of power is a new level of intercession. I'm trying to tell you it's different, you all. All right, the angel of the Lord appears on the right side. It's a side of power. Something powerful is about to happen. Point number three, my shortest point, the prophetic call. Mm. This faithful family have been carved out through their times of adversity, and because they have shown consistency, God is now about to use them in an unusual way. You show consistency, God, God sees you. You don't have to convince them. He sees you. 
You show consistency, he'll show up. 12 and 13, and when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, <laughs> and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. A prayer. What prayer? And thy wife, Elizabeth, shall bear thee a son. So that and means it's more than one prayer that was being prayed. So it was the prayer of intercession over the people and the prayers way back when about the son. Come on up out of here. Come on. Thy prayer is heard and thy wife. So he had stopped praying about the wife. What do you do 80 years praying that she gets pregnant? Because it says only one prayer, so that's the current prayer of intercession. But the angel tags on that prayer that you prayed way, yeah. way, way back decades ago. Got you covered, bro. Got bro. You got me heard, Papa. Dad, dad. <laughs> For thy prayer is heard. And thy wife, wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. God will use this man, this couple, to fulfill prophecy. This is important. Prophecy, you know, you know. It is their son, it is their seed, their son John the Baptist, who will use his prophetic voice. Now, hold on now. This, I'm, I'm a I, I definitely love teaching, because I'm just getting stuff. What we have to do with this new move of God through this couple to speak forth Jesus, we have to now see what do prophets do? Mm. Old Testament standard, standard to get, I like that. My God, Holy Ghost, you something else. Old Testament prophets would stand at the gate to influence the courts. I feel glory. To influence the courts. And the, and, and the first family, the politics. New Testament. New Testament prophets ain't once stood at a gate yet. <laughs> Standing at no gate. They're doing this right here. Every New Testament from the time of John the Baptist till now, you do one thing if you're a prophet. You herald the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm not say I ain't gonna promise you a husband's coming, a car's coming, a house is coming. I'm gonna promise you that the King of Kings is coming. Jesus is coming, and so you gotta get your house in order. I'm not say kete arobosa. But anyway, look at this. Zechariah is full of fear, right? Fear can cancel out faith. A move of fear will cancel out a move of faith. Hence, you see that the angelic messenger quickly arrests the fear that might disturb the miracle that God is about to do. He'd be like, oh, Lord, shut him up. So the first thing he does, <laughs> he says, fear not. Mm -hmm. He's like, Sh shut it down. Shut it down. That's another thing. When you believe that God is going to do something, you shut down the fear. Shut it down. Okay. Because God is about to do something. What are you about to do? 14. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. I can't have the father in fear and the child rejoicing. Because watch it now. Watch it. This is a lesson for fathers. Children usually learn after their parents. How are males today? Mm. Learn how to get her pregnant and leave her. Because the father usually told her. Taught him. We have an epidemic of single motherhood. I'm not going to go on that. That's something I'm going to talk about a little later on TV. So, Zacharias, because you're full of, you got fear. Wait a minute. The first response was fear. So, what I need to tell you is fear not. And the angel tell you, fear not, you fear not. 
Mm? So watch this. For what God is about to do for you, you will have joy. You can't have fear and joy. You can't have fear and joy at the same time. The element of the heavenly element of contentment will be in all that you go through. You're going to go through stuff, but somehow you're going to feel like heaven. Even though you're going through stuff, like you still feel saddled. You are also, so that's joy. You are also, because he says you have a joy and gladness. Joy is the heavenly element, right? You know? And you have gladness. This is the earthly element of contentment despite all that you go through. So God, oh, oh man, I can't help it. He just keeps on talking to me. It's like, you know how the Holy Spirit um, overshadowed Mary and Jesus was 100% human and 100% divine? This is sort of this right here. You're going to have joy. That's heaven. And you're going to have gladness. That's earth, right? Who did that rule? I like that rule. Do it again. Woo. <laughs> yeah. God, listen, God is about to touch the lives of this couple the way that he, watch this, is about to touch the world. This is the reason we need Jesus. The world was not fulfilled by the law, the courts, or the religious system. Do you hear me? You know, sometimes people run from one church to another. They steal themselves. So they steal. <laughs> Mama, I'll tell you. You know, it's like they go, oh, let me take a drink for this. Food. They go, um, this church ain't it no more. So they go run, run her. Then you, then it may be in like six months when I say, I wonder what's going on. Says so last, last I heard, she was here. Oh no, they moved on. Uh, <laughs> going up to another church. <laughs> you are not going to find joy and gladness in a church, not even in Shekinah. You got to find it in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come on, yeah. see I blow that. I'm, I'm blowing this to smithereens. That's right. You got to be in relationship. That's what matters. <laughs> I can say so much. So listen, Zacharias and Elizabeth, you will have joy. And because of the prophetic voice of your son, many will rejoice. See, so your joy and gladness is not just about you. You should be shining forth so that others can rejoice. Come on, can rejoice at what God has done for you. So this rejoicing is not ordinary. The joy is not world-given. And you know, it's the joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take away. What? <laughs> the world can't take away our joy? Now they can make you good and vex and remove some of your happiness for a moment, but the joy can't touch it. Now I ain't gonna do that thing again. I did that before. Okay, the joy is a divine joy, joy to the world. Verse 15, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. Uh, there's another teaching point. And he shall be great in the sight of the Lord mm -hmm. and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Hear me. In order to be a carrier of the kingdom joy, Kingdom joy, Mother Sumner, kingdom joy, it cannot be mingled with earthly joy. That's, this is the real, let's pretend this is this the real stuff. This has got real alcohol in it. You got the pretend stuff. Girl, I want you to bring the, bring the real stuff, bring the hard stuff up in here because it would have had more emphasis. This even looks pretty. Okay. So you can't mingle. You can't mingle heavenly joy. See? <laughs> That's why semen, trust you me, I can be at home, at the airport, outside of cinnamon snail, and I can be getting insight and having myself a good time. 
Why? Because it's, it's the heavenly joy. That sounds like a name. Any child's name, heavenly joy? Heavenly joy. It's a girl's name. Heavenly joy. Now, for this other people, they don't got, they don't got I'm going to say it like that. They don't got heavenly joy. So they got a mingle of the spirit. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've got this GoPro camera. I wish I could. No, I can't because I'm blurring my cover. I wish I could charge it, go down a certain grocery store, just pin it somewhere. <laughs> go away for, pin it somewhere. Let me, let me tell you where. I will pin it facing the registers near the alcohol section. And then I'll come back two hours later, very subtly, because I'm a subtle type of person. Go home and look at the footage. <laughs> I would see some of the shank, so, look, some of the church people. I ain't got no heavenly joy, because I'm going and got myself. Joy, 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 a different type of joy. It's like a happiness joy. Because it's temporary. Because they run out of it. What? Seeming going to have joy from the portals of glory? Don't need to go down, buy it by the, by the checkout. Like the devil is right next to the checkout. You know? And they're going to be spending some money. Right? So while I'm happy that Linda's isn't open on a Sunday, Monday through seven, full open with liquor, full open. Anyway, I'm just trying to tell you, look, the joy that the that the joy of the world that comes by wine and strong drink, you do not need that. Holy scamoli. Let me tell you something. I'm just gonna help you out right here. Watch this. God just saved you a lot of money. <laughs> You know, and then my daughter number two, she showed me, I, I was just rebuking it, she showed me a picture. Might have been on the airplane coming back, or just before we got on the airplane, for Heineken. Heineken, just like in the green Heineken bottle, now selling something with 0%. 0%. So what they're trying to do, let me help you. This is why I try to say, she's like, oh, isn't that good? Mama said, no! Shun the very appearance of evil. They just want to draw you in. Right. Zero today, next year something else. Get One day, you're sad, you pick up the green bottle, open up, start drinking it, it's the wrong one. Don't do it! Don't you pick up that non-alcoholic Heineken. The devil is he's always trying to be so subtle. And you don't need none of his happiness or joy. Shh. See, I was thinking about that, Jana, when you said it, your whole sermon and all. So I was very passionate on the plane. Mm -hmm. So the Holy, uh, watch this. The Holy Spirit needs no help from a contrary spirit. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this world is so caught up in wines and spirits that they have canceled out the power of the Holy Spirit. How a Christian, how a church going attending Christian going to tell me they need to have a little bit of something, something. I'm full of, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. So ain't no other type of spirit. God, ain't no room in me. When you come, devil, to see if you can tempt me, you find no room in me. The reason that there is less, listen to this, the reason that there is less true prophetic word it's because many are looking to be made joyous by hearing a word about themselves. I told you John the Baptist didn't come talking about John the Baptist. He came talking about Jesus. And they want to hear about themselves when the true joy and gladness comes when you hear about Jesus Christ. That is, when you hear the word about the living word. We need Jesus, director. The world needs Jesus, if you want to experience the best life and the blessed life, put down all the other substitutes, all the other substitutes. 
and call on Jesus. Don't tell me Jesus can't fulfill you. Don't tell me. No, no, don't tell me that because you don't have such, you ain't got a man, you ain't got a woman, you ain't got a husband. Don't, don't, don't come up to me and tell me, well, you don't know, I said God knows. Devil always wants to want you to feel like you're at a deficit. That you need a little something, something. No, you don't. You need the living word of God. Only when, only then will you have a merry Christmas and a merry every other day. Zacharias and Elizabeth and all the people of that day needed Jesus. And I'm telling you, church, we need Jesus the same way today. Many people sitting in darkness, comfortable in darkness. Com comfortable in their turmoil. We can't be thus. And so on this, what is it, second last Sunday of the year, use these messages to get your focus. Because this is going to help you over 2020, in 2020, through 2020. My satisfaction ain't going to press I'm married to an awesome guy. I have great joy and great happiness. And then there are some times I don't have joy. <laughs> and neither does he. That's what I'm trying to It can't. Come here, Alex. See me. Come here. I got to teach. I got to teach one more lesson. Learn the lesson. Get ready for the lesson. If my whole joy and happiness was him. That would tell God that there's no need for him to supersede in my life. So, I mean, this guy, hard working. You know, somebody asked me, what, what was a date like without, with Peter? That was his name, right? Peter. What was a date like? Oh, I'll get on his bike, you go up to somebody's house, and I'll watch him change a toilet. <laughs> That's true. I, you know, you used to take off, you know, the thing. They were brand new. A new toilet. Yes, it was always a new one. Some nice houses, right? <laughs> but you know why? I knew that he was the one that God chose for me. So therefore, it was a joy. None of these girls today. Watch him change a toy. See, that's why you ain't got the man. You meet a man in his workplace. He shouldn't be on your couch taking your children to school. What, what in the world? Driving your car. What? He had that Vespa 90, wasn't it? Vespa? That's for 90. And listen, let me, let me tell you something else. I could go to sleep on the back of that bike. You remember that? Many times. Many times. Because you know what? He was responsible and I trusted him. And my mama liked him. Parents know you know. So I had no concerns. Now, this is an earthly representation, supposed to be covenant relationship of the Holy Spirit. You're playing the right song, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Elder Sam. Because even with the best husband, wonderful man, I understand it's gotta be God, your spirit. You, you kept us during times of misunderstanding. You kept us during times that could have been destructive. So God, we reverence you and we glorify you. And now that we're able to enjoy so much, and he says something, yeah, I ain't gonna tell you what he said, but I'm like, woo -wee. Okay, and any, any point being is, it, uh, married 35 years next year, might have took some time. You know what I'm saying, is it? Yeah, he knows. Put the camera on him, put the camera on him, get him. You, you know what I'm saying, is it? You know what you're saying.